How does Dubois outline the history of black folk in America over the course of his text? In this lesson, you will learn to trace the development of an idea over the course of a text by creating an outline. So let's review. Here is our text, and we know that this is the first chapter of uh, W.B. Du Bois' book, and that it outlines the history of a people and sets up an argument. Now, good readers know that when a writer is um, working on a text, that they will use details and information and examples throughout the text to reiterate or um, focus their ideas. A good reader will stop and pause after reading a little bit of the text to see how this information or details all relate together. A mistake some readers make is just to read all the way through the text and not pause to try to develop some connections. But when we read closely a text, we are having a conversation with it. So we want to stop, see how there are connections. How is an idea changed? or developed or enhanced throughout the text by these details, information, and examples. So first we're going to find the central idea of each paragraph. Then we're going to ask, when do these events take place? Finally, we're going to write down each idea in order. So here's our question again, and look that it's, it's mainly asking us to develop the history of black folks. So we want to concentrate on history. So when we're skimming, we're going to look for time clues, like the history of the American Negro, and hear about the uh, shadow through Ethiopia and Egypt through history. So let's look at this section closely. The history of the American Negro is the history of this strife, this longing to attain self-conscious manhood, to merge his double self into a better and truer self. The shadow of a mighty Negro past flits through the tale of Ethiopia the shadowy and of Egypt the Sphinx. Through history, the powers of single black men flash here and there like falling stars and die sometimes before the world has rightly gauged their brightness. So let's pause here and think about what, it, what is the text telling us about this particular time in, in history. We see that first it's looking at overall. The history of the American Negro is the history of the African Americans is the struggle to be better, the struggle of this strife. And then in the second section, um, Dubois points out that this starts in Ethiopia and Egypt, and that Africans were not recognized for their power. And here we have another clue, away back in the days. So let's look at that closely. Away back in the days of bondage, they thought to see in one divine event the end of all doubt and disappointment. Few men ever worshipped freedom with half such unquestioning faith as did the American Negro for two centuries. Okay, so for 200 years, what is this saying? What did they do away back in the days of bondage? So we're saying during the days of slavery, African Americans thought that freedom would solve their problems. For 200 years, slaves believed in freedom. So looks for our next time clue, the first decade, as time flew. So let's look at this closely. The first decade was merely a prolongation of the vain search for freedom, the boon that seemed ever barely to elude their grasp, the holocaust of war, the terrors of the Ku Klux Klan, the lies of carpetbaggers, the disorganization of industry, and the contradictory advice of friends and foes left the bewildered surf with no new watchword beyond the old cry for freedom. As the time flew, however, he began to grasp a new idea. The ideal of liberty demanded for its attainment powerful means, and these the 15th Amendment gave him. In the following years, a new vision began gradually to replace the dream of political power. It was the ideal of book learning. So we're pausing here. The first decade, what are they telling us about this? first decade, right after freedom. So then we know here that blacks suffered from war, the KKK, carpetbaggers, bad advice, and that truly that they believed voting the 15th Amendment and education, what Dubois here calls book learning, held the power. These are the things they needed. So we're again, for the first time, and let's read that carefully. For the first time he felt his poverty, 
without a cent, without a home, without land, tools, or saving, he had entered into competition with rich, landed, skilled neighbors. To be a poor man is hard, but to be a poor race in a land of dollars is the very bottom of hardships. He felt the weight of his ignorance not simply of letters, but of life, of business, of the humanities. Nor was his burden all poverty and ignorance. So let's see this in this first part, <clears throat> pausing and thinking about what was happening here. So the newly freed slaves had no money, no land, no tools. And then finally, to be poor in a rich land is the very bottom of hardships, which is what happened here. Okay, and then let's read the second part. The red stain of bastardy, which two centuries of systematic legal defilement of Negro women had stamped upon his race, meant not only the loss of ancient African chastity, but also the hereditary weight of a mass of corruption from white adulterers, threatening almost the obliteration of the Negro home. So what's happening here? Not only were they dealing with all this poverty, but they're also dealing with the legal rape of slaves. Destroy the tradition of chastity, and it also threatened to break up families. Now that I have all my notes together, I need to ask myself, when do these events take place? This is especially important because our question is asking us about to trace the history. So first I put down, you know, first we have ancient history, Ethiopia, and Egypt, and then second of all, Dubois talks to us about slavery, how the slaves wanted freedom, but war, the KKK, and the carpetbaggers holding them back, increasing the oppression, and then finally there was the right to vote, but they realized they needed education, and they were dealing with the aftermath of rape. So I need to ask myself when I look at these, okay, what is the common string through all of these? And I see that Dubois is outlining the African-American struggle from ancient history to the time of his writings in the, 19, in the early 19th century. And that this approach helps readers visualize the scope of the problem. So he's using history to show how the struggle started from ancient time all the way down until um, the time of his writing, the early 19th century. So first we found the central idea of each paragraph, and then we asked when do these events take place, and finally we wrote down each idea in order. In this lesson you have learned to trace an idea's development over the course of a text by creating an outline.